for a year now, just about everything about how we, our church together, has changed. We've learned how to bring the church into our homes using tools we had all along, but never quite thought of using that way. The cameras on our phones, our computers, our internet connections. We've had to change the way we worship, even when we can be together. Can you even remember now how strange you would have thought it if a year and a half ago you'd come to church on a Sunday morning and everyone around you was wearing a mask? Life under the pandemic has affected all of us, and it has changed us in ways that are not reversible. We will be different people. Christian communities like ours will work differently because of these harrowing months. And while this time has affected each of us differently, one thing is probably true for all of us. We spent a lot more time at home than we ever thought we would. While the church has been working really hard to make sure all of us at home can at least see the sight of this familiar space and be part of a virtual worship community, there's a somewhat uncomfortable reality we've had to grapple with on the home end of that equation. It's that we've suddenly had to make our homes into places that aren't just where we eat and sleep and entertain and be with our family. Our homes are now our offices and our classrooms and our studios and everything else. So are we really ready to make our homes into our church as well? Whatever it is you do to get from where you live to where your church is, is by itself a kind of meditation. You leave one space of familiarity and routine for another place of mystery and awe. You leave a place that you're always working to keep somehow orderly and clean, and you come to a place that is ordered and beautiful and magisterial. There is a difference between home and church, and for most of us, it's a difference we long for and treasure. But there's a bit of a danger in that too, because when that separation is so clear and so certain, we can forget that the most important thing about us isn't that we're churchgoers, it's that we're Christians. And we're supposed to be Christians, people whose lives and words and actions show that they are shaped by the teachings of Jesus everywhere we go, not just in church. We're even supposed to be Christians of all places at home. So, if the pandemic has suddenly set before us the need to bring more of the church into our homes, maybe that's not such a bad thing. After all, the first Christians didn't gather in churches. They gathered in houses. Their experience of God was one that suffused all aspects of their lives, even especially their homes. If you think of it that way, the thing we celebrate today, Monday, Thursday, might be the perfect observance for a church changed by COVID. Because after all, what it reminds us of isn't an event that took place in a church or even a thing for which churches get named. It reminds us of a meal shared by Jesus with the people he loved most gathered together in a humble place. When we gather to remember that shared meal, we're also invited to remember that Jesus is present, not just on the altar in our beautiful churches, but at our family tables at home as well. Monday Thursday really may be the moment of the church year that captures best what the meaning of the pandemic has been for our life as church. Because Monday Thursday is about the places Jesus comes to meet us, the ways that Jesus makes sacred the simplest, most routine, most intimate part of our lives. The homes we share with our families, the tables we share with our friends, 
the food we share with each other. So, on this Monday Thursday, wherever you are, may Christ be present at your table and in your home, and may Christ's abiding presence sustain and sanctify your life. Amen. Thank you.